As we all know, climate change is a very real and dangerous thing. Parts of the world are warming at an unprecedented rate and one of those places being hardest hit is the permafrost in Siberia. Not content with the melting permafrost causing mass die-offs of reindeer and resurrecting long-dead strains of zombie anthrax, it appears the very cities built on the permafrost are also in imminent danger. According to new Russian-US research, the study, published in the journal Geographical Review, warns of the risk to buildings and infrastructure in urban areas across the Russian permafrost region due to climate change. According to the authors, in a worst-case scenario, the bearing capacity of buildings built on permafrost could be reduced by 75 to 95 percent by 2050. Basically, the thawing of the permafrost can potentially lead to deformation and collapse of structures. The study looked at four Siberian cities in detail Salikard, Norilsk, Yakutsk, and Anadyr each within the region underpinned by permafrost, that makes up 63 percent of Russian territory. Numerous studies have shown the Russian Arctic is warming at a rate of 0.12 degrees centigrade, 0.22 degrees Fahrenheit, a year, which is significantly higher than the global average. On average, the fastest changes are projected for Salikard on Anadyr. There the bearing capacity has potential to decrease to critical levels by the mid-2020s, according to the authors. In Yakutsk and Norilsk, the critical climate-induced decrease in bearing capacity is expected around the 2040s. The authors stress that, although climate projections are not definitive conclusions, new construction techniques should take into consideration the changes in the permafrost that have happened and will continue happening. Our analysis demonstrates that climate-induced permafrost changes can potentially undermine the structural stability of foundations, indicating a clear need for adopting construction norms and regulations for permafrost regions that account for projected climate changes. The study concludes that a significant reduction in the stability of urban infrastructure in the Siberian permafrost region should be expected by the mid-21st century. We're not really sure what is holding President Putin back from ratifying the Paris Climate Agreement, as it is rather apparent Russia needs to act sooner rather than later. While we were gorging on delicious food and arguing with relatives, Hubble produced some of the finest observations of Galaxy Iris 16399-0937. This object, which is located 370 million light years from the Milky Way, is a maser, a sort of natural laser, where the light emission is observable, not in visible light but in microwaves, thus the M in maser. Iris 16399 is not just your regular maser, it's a mega maser 100 million times brighter than the masers found in galaxies like the Milky Way. Lasers work on the principle of stimulating light emissions at a specific frequency from a particular gas, and similarly, some galactic gas clouds have the right conditions to produce microwaves, just like this object, again all at the same frequency. The Hubble observation provides a crystal clear view of this galaxy. The object is peculiarly shaped because it's the product of a collision of two galaxies of roughly the same mass. This galaxy merger is not only responsible for the curious structure of the galaxy, but also for the activities in the two bright cores visible in the space telescope image. The North Core, Iris 16399N, is known as a liner, low ionization nuclear emission region, an almost quiet region by galactic standards. On the other end, the South Core, Iris 16399s is in full swing with new stars forming at a rate of dozens, if not hundreds, of times higher than the Milky Way. But don't let this difference in activity fool you. The real kicker hides in Iris 16399N, where a supermassive black hole 100 million times the mass of our Sun hides, in waiting surrounded by gas. Iris 16399N and Iris 16399s are 11,000 light years apart, but they are getting closer and closer to each other. Eventually, the two cores will merge, and the supermassive black hole will wake up. When that happens in a few hundred million years, powerful jets will heat up the galaxy and choke any new star formation. But for now, and for many years to come, we can enjoy this breathtaking picture of this incredible galaxy. 2016 will be remembered for many things, from the good, the bad, to the ugly, and that's just talking about the new animals discovered by science. 
So, as we wave goodbye, or perhaps good riddance, to the year, here's a breakdown of the brightest, boldest, weirdest, coolest, and most interesting species that have either been recently discovered or described in scientific papers during 2016. Ziggy stardust snake This new species of snake was discovered among the cliffs of northern Laos in Southeast Asia. In homage to the late David Bowie who passed away in 2016, this glam rock oddity with psychedelic scales has been named Ziggy Stardust. The Snake and I, The Venom High. Alexander Taney WWF Harry Potter Sorting Hat Spider Among the many fantastic beasts discovered this year, one 7mm long spider named Arivixia Gryffindori captured more hearts and imaginations than any. Indian scientists discovered a spider with an uncanny resemblance to the sorting hat used to sift wizardry students into their schoolhouses in the Harry Potter universe. Even Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling was impressed. Read more about the creature in the Indian Journal of Aerogenology. Indian Journal of Aerogenology via Javed Ahmed Twitter Next page Next page Full article What's a Prince Rupert's drop, you ask? Well, science lovers, read on. A Prince Rupert's drop is what happens when you drop molten glass into very cold water. The glass cools into a tadpole-shaped teardrop with a bulbous, unbreakable drop and a fragile tail that will shatter at the slightest sign of stress. They have been fascinating scientists since the 1600s, who have been testing the properties of these drops and just what they can withstand for centuries. Luckily, scientists and generally curious truth seekers these days have YouTube channels where they perform their experiments so we can watch and, of course, observe the results. YouTuber Smarter Every Day has done just that with a video showing what happens when he shoots a bullet at the bulb end of a Prince Rupert's drop. You can watch the results below in all its 150,000 frames per second glory. Does it withstand the impact? Is it unbreakable? We promise you, the slow-mo bit is very cool. Here's the science and spoilers bit. The bullet doesn't actually break the bulb, it bounces off and grazes the droplet, which sends a shock wave through the tail. The tail then immediately shatters, sending stress fractures back down to the bulb and exploding the whole thing. To put it simply, when the molten glass is dropped into cold water, the outside cools and solidifies almost instantly, while the inside remains molten for longer and cools much more slowly. Since glass expands when it's hot and contracts when it cools, as the inside part cools, it tries to pull the already solid, cool outer layer in with it. This makes the bulb even more solid and eventually bulletproof, holding it all together in a state of tensile stress. That's a lot of pent-up energy. However, if the fragile, thin, breakable tail end of the drop experiences stress, it will break immediately and send fractures back into the bulb at high speed, releasing all that pent-up energy, which causes the bulb to shatter. Alternatively, you can just watch Smarter Every Day's previous video that explains in great detail the wonders of the enigma that is the Prince Rupert's drop. This year may have been a grim one on many fronts, but the heavens are at least giving it a good send-off. Wherever the skies are clear, there will be two comets visible via binoculars on the night when 2016 turns into 2017. As the sun sets on December 31st, Venus will be bright in the western sky, accompanied by a much fainter Mars. If you make a line from Mars to Venus and then keep going about the same distance, you will find yourself not far from comet 45P Honda Mercos Pechdusakova. Unless your eyesight is excellent and you are well away from interfering lights, you won't be able to see it unaided, but binoculars or a small telescope should show at least the comet's head and possibly even the tail. Depending on your time zone, the comet may be quite close to the crescent moon, which will be faintly visible at the time. If you do some serious partying and are still up shortly before dawn, you may get a chance to see a second comet named C 2016 U1 Eyes. It's currently in a Phaeacus, the zodiac constellation astrologers prefer to forget. At this point, C 2016 U1 Eyes will be too faint for the naked eye, even under the best conditions, but binoculars may bring it out. Moreover, it should get brighter over the first few weeks of the new year. It's not unusual for there to be two or more comets in the sky at once, but the overwhelming majority are far too faint to see without telescopes. Two that are either at the edge of visibility or are expected to get there soon is an unusual conjunction. 
Moreover, the two comets represent a stark contrast. Comet 45P Honda Marcos Pachdusakova is a short period comet first discovered in 1948. With an orbit lasting just 5.25 years, it has been back 13 times since. Sometimes, however, the Earth has been on the wrong side of the Sun for a good view. This time, however, we should get a better look. It's visible in Capricorn, so Southern Hemisphere observers will get the best view. It's getting closer to the Sun, so it will become harder to spot if you miss it tonight. On the other hand, C2016 U1 Neowise has an orbit of at least a million years, and indeed may never have visited the inner solar system before. This makes it far more unpredictable in its brightness than 45P Honda Mercos Pachdusakova. Depending on its mix of dust and volatile compounds that will turn to gas with the sun's heat, it could become quite bright. Or be another on the list of comets that never lived up to expectations.